The renowned Stoic philosopher Epictetus once imparted his wisdom, saying, Associate with those who elevate you, individuals whose presence draws out your finest qualities. You've likely heard the adage that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Today we will delve into this concept from a Stoic perspective. We will explore the seven types of people who can hinder your progress in Stoic philosophy and why it's essential to reconsider your friendships with them. Before we embark on this journey, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like the video to help me continue spreading Stoic philosophy. If you're not subscribed yet, I recommend subscribing and activating the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Type of people to avoid. 1. The complainer. In our lives, we often encounter that one individual, be it a close friend, a family member, or a coworker, who seems to harbor an unyielding propensity to uncover faults in just about anything, whether it's the capricious weather, the nuances of their job, or even the culinary offerings at a revered restaurant. They seize every conceivable opportunity to vocalize their grievances, leaving a trail of negativity in their wake. At first glance, it might be tempting to dismiss their perpetual dissatisfaction as an inconsequential annoyance. Why should I concern myself with their incessant complaints, you may ponder. However, the reality of dealing with such a constant wellspring of negativity is far from trivial. This persistent exposure can have a corrosive impact on your mental well-being. It's like having a leaky faucet that gradually drains your reservoir of emotional energy, leaving you with a sense of weariness and disheartenment. Stoicism, with its foundational principles, teaches us to shift our focus away from merely acknowledging problems and instead toward seeking actionable solutions. For instance, imagine you find yourself collaborating on a project with a persistent complainer. Every meeting becomes a laborious ordeal, dominated by grievances rather than constructive discussions. This unrelenting cycle takes a toll on the team's morale, diverting your collective energy away from problem-solving and innovation. Over time, you may even notice a growing disillusionment, not only with the project at hand, but potentially with life in general. How then can Stoicism aid us in effectively dealing with a complainer? There are multiple strategies at your disposal. Limit exposure. Your first line of defense is to minimize your exposure to this individual whenever circumstances allow. This can be challenging when the complainer is a family member or a colleague, but when possible, create boundaries to shield yourself from their ceaseless negativity. Mental distancing. If distancing physically is not an option, employ a technique of mental distancing during their tirades. Visualize their complaints as transient storms, noisy and disconcerting, but ultimately temporary and powerless in the face of your own unshakable inner tranquility. Steer toward solutions. Whenever engaged in conversation with the complainer, Strive to shift the dialogue towards constructive solutions or topics that bear a more positive and uplifting essence. Redirect the conversation in a way that encourages them to contemplate potential remedies rather than dwelling on problems. Remember the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This ageless stoic insight underscores the importance of safeguarding your mental peace diligently ensuring that the relentless stream of negativity from chronic complainers does not divert you from your stoic path toward resilience and virtue. 2. The Drama Magnet Envision your life as a meticulously charted ship, gracefully gliding through tranquil waters, guided by your own carefully plotted course. However, in this voyage, you're bound to encounter the whirlpool known as the Drama Magnet. This individual possesses an uncanny knack for attracting an unending series of crises, conflicts, or controversies into their life, much like a whirlpool that exerts an unsettling force, threatening to pull you into its vortex of chaos. In the beginning, you might be drawn to the drama magnet's energy, perhaps mistaking their passion and excitement for a zest for life. But sooner or later, the true nature of being in their sphere reveals itself. Akin to navigating your ship through a tempest, the journey becomes both exhausting and perilous. What makes dealing with drama magnets particularly intricate is their talent for making their crises feel as if they are yours. Their chaos is infectious, and you may soon find yourself enmeshed in conflicts and dilemmas that were initially of no concern to you. Let's delve into a practical example for a clearer understanding. 
Consider having a friend in your social circle who frequently engages in disputes with others. Today they're at odds with Sarah, and tomorrow it's Tom. Your friend continually turns to you for advice, but as you observe, this pattern of conflicts never truly reaches resolution. Suddenly, you find yourself entangled in disagreements with Sarah or Tom, all because you attempted to intervene and mediate. To mitigate these entanglements, you can employ a strategic approach known as reflective listening. Instead of offering advice or taking sides, mirror back their words to them. For instance, if your friend exclaims, I can't believe Sarah said that about me, your response could be, so you're feeling betrayed by Sarah's words. This technique allows you to provide emotional support without immersing yourself in the drama's undertow. Another approach, which may initially seem counterintuitive, is to become selectively unavailable. Stoicism emphasizes the importance of valuing your time highly, and this occasionally means setting boundaries when it comes to other people's recurring crises, especially when they lack resolution. For instance, you can turn off your phone during designated hours, creating periods of focused attention on your work or personal development. Make it clear that during these times, you're not to be disturbed. To borrow from the wisdom of Seneca, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This perspective becomes especially invaluable when dealing with drama magnets. Rather than anxiously anticipating the next crisis, center your attention on the present moment where you wield control. Cherish the life you have and refuse to let it be disrupted by someone else's tumultuous drama. Make it a steadfast commitment to sail your ship with tranquility, skillfully steering clear of the whirlpools that might otherwise threaten your voyage towards personal growth and inner tranquility. 3. The Naysayer. Let's embark on a vivid mental journey. Picture yourself as an artist, fervently applying brush strokes to a canvas, each one breathing life, depth, and color into your creative vision. Now enter the naysayer. They stride into your studio, eyes casting a cursory glance upon your work, only to unleash a torrent of critique. Are you sure about that color? It doesn't look realistic. You know, most artists never make it, they opine. Their words, akin to strokes of lifeless gray paint, unfalteringly begin to obscure the vibrancy of your once luminous canvas. It's crucial to distinguish this form of criticism from the constructive variety. Rather than offering insights aimed at improvement, the naysayer engenders a persistent aura of doubt and negativity. To illustrate further, let's consider a scenario where you are brimming with enthusiasm about venturing into a new career path. You've meticulously researched the field, engaged in meaningful conversations with seasoned professionals, and may have even completed a few introductory courses. When you share this elation with the naysayer, they promptly unleash a litany of reasons why your aspirations are destined for failure. The market is oversaturated. Do you truly possess the requisite skills? What if your efforts culminate in failure? Gradually, their skepticism begins to infiltrate your once unwavering self-confidence, causing your well-defined vision to waver precariously. So, how does one effectively navigate the influence of a naysayer? especially when their presence may be close and dear. An unconventional yet highly effective approach is to solicit their advice instead of merely disclosing your plans and aspirations. By positioning them in an advisory role, they are less inclined to launch direct attacks on your ideas and are more likely to offer constructive feedback. Another approach involves flipping the narrative through a technique termed positive confrontation. Instead of passively absorbing their negativity, you challenge them to partake in solution-oriented thinking. If they assert, you'll never be able to switch careers at this stage, respond with, that's an interesting perspective. How do you think someone could successfully transition to a new career? This not only redirects the conversation away from the realm of negativity, but also fosters a more constructive form of dialogue. Recall the timeless wisdom of the Stoic philosopher Epictetus. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. In this context, listening does not equate to indiscriminately absorbing everyone's negativity. Rather, it involves the discernment of valuable input from the cacophony of mere noise. When the naysayers begin to cast shadows of doubt upon your creative canvas, it's imperative to step back, reassess, and choose the path that aligns most closely with your unwavering vision.
4. C. The Victim Let's embark on a mental voyage where life is akin to a game of chess, a strategic battlefield where each player is endowed with the same pieces and shares the identical objective, to maneuver their pieces adeptly to attain checkmate against their opponent's king. In this intricate game, one must employ foresight, make calculated sacrifices, and take risks. However, the character we are discussing here is the victim. They defy the essence of this strategic contest, for they habitually lay blame upon the chessboard, the pieces, or even their adversary for every ill-conceived move they make. In their eyes, they exist in a perpetual state of checkmate, not due to their choices or strategies, but as a consequence of some external force perpetually conspiring against them. Their narrative is a ceaseless saga of woe, with themselves cast as the helpless protagonist ensnared by an unrelenting plot. It's vital to acknowledge that genuine hardships and systemic challenges exist, but the type of victim we are addressing here employs their circumstances as an enduring excuse, absolving themselves from taking responsibility for their actions or inaction. Engaging with such a character can draw you into their narrative, where you may assume the role of the perpetual savior, constantly endeavoring to rescue them from their perceived misfortunes. As an example, Envision spending countless hours listening to a friend attribute their string of failed relationships entirely to their former partners. This not only consumes your time, but subtly instills in you the inclination to embrace a victim mindset in your own life. So what is your course of action when entangled with a victim, particularly if they are close to you? An unconventional yet potent approach is to pose open-ended questions that prompt them to reflect on their situation instead of proffering immediate solutions or willingly adopting the role of the perennial problem solver. Inquire into their perspective with questions such as, what do you believe you could do differently in this scenario? Or how do you envision taking control of this facet of your life? Another approach is to exhibit empathy and kindness, all while refraining from becoming the perpetual rescuer who intervenes in situations they should navigate themselves. Extend a sympathetic and attentive ear but resist the inclination to perpetually shoulder their burdens. Recall the sagacious words of the Stoic philosopher Epictetus. The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. Should you ever find yourself drawn into the victim's narrative, resist the temptation to adopt that role as your own. Seize control of your individual chessboard, make strategic moves, and bear in mind that in life's grand chess game, being perpetually trapped in checkmate often reflects a choice rather than an inescapable fate. Progress by moving your pieces forward, embracing calculated sacrifices when required, and engaging in the game not for retribution or pity, but for the sake of personal growth and wisdom. 5. The Toxic Positivist You're likely familiar with this character, the perpetual beacon of sunshine, rainbows, and an endless cascade of emojis. They're the individuals who, in your moments of hardship, offer simplistic advice like, just be happy, while casually dismissing your emotions and experiences with a carefree wave of glittering optimism. To better comprehend the dynamics at play, envisage your life as a garden. Within its bounds, there are undoubtedly vibrant flowers, but coexisting with them are the ever-present weeds and bothersome pests. However, the toxic positivist stubbornly insists on turning a blind eye to anything that doesn't resemble a blossoming rose. Have aphids on your leaves? Focus solely on the flowers. Let not a whiff of negativity infiltrate your garden, they'd ardently advocate. Although this philosophy may appear uplifting on the surface, it tends to invalidate your genuine feelings and, rather ironically, disconnects you from the reality of your emotional landscape. For instance, Imagine navigating the stormy seas of a heart-wrenching breakup. You're submerged in a maelstrom of sadness, confusion, and a fervent quest for emotional equilibrium. The advice you receive from the toxic positivist? There are plenty of fish in the sea. Just smile and be happy. This excessive emphasis on positivity negates the intricate tapestry of human emotions and the notion of relational granularity which underscores our capacity to experience and differentiate between a wide spectrum of emotions, both positive and negative. When the toxic positivist urges you to just be happy, it is paramount to take a moment to acknowledge and label your nuanced feelings. Recognize that it's perfectly acceptable to say, 
I'm feeling somewhat melancholic today due to the breakup and that's absolutely fine. This self-affirmation can be profoundly liberating. In alignment with Stoic philosophy, the words of Seneca echo through time. True happiness is to understand our duties toward God and man, to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Embrace the profound value that both positive and negative emotions bring to your life, and resist the tendency of the toxic positivist to oversimplify and homogenize the rich landscape of your emotional garden. 6. The Manipulator Imagine your life as an intricately woven movie script. You assume the leading role, harboring a well-defined vision of how your narrative should unfold, a vision that includes the anticipated plot twists, the identities of your trusted allies and mentors, and the climax that defines your final act. Yet into the script writing process, slyly steps the manipulator, donning the cloak of a shadowy producer. They exercise their influence with such subtlety that you scarcely discern the alterations they enact. It's only when you suddenly realize that your storyline has veered off course that their manipulative hand becomes apparent. Dealing with a manipulator requires a deft touch and a keen awareness of their tactics. One method, often coined as fugging by experts, involves a unique blend of acknowledging any truths embedded within the manipulator's statements while adamantly resisting any emotional coercion they endeavor to exert. For instance, if the manipulator suggests, you're so successful, you should cover dinner, your response could be, you're absolutely right that things have been going well, but let's adhere to our customary practice of splitting the bill. Another strategic approach is the establishment of firm boundaries, and more crucially, their unwavering enforcement. When the manipulator seeks to sway you into parting with your money, or coerce you into altering your responses. This is the precise moment when you regain control of your script. In this scenario, you are the one holding the pen, thereby bestowing upon you the authority to write your own narrative. Within the ensemble cast that populates your life stage, encompassing a variety of characters, you are unequivocally the protagonist. The journey that unfolds, your journey should invariably be guided by your intrinsic values and individual decisions. Reclaim the reins of your script and resist any attempts to manipulate the narrative of your life. 7. The Time Vampire Envision your daily routine as a meticulously crafted plan, each moment thoughtfully allocated. Yet within this structure, there invariably emerges that one individual who persistently obstructs your progress, a colleague whose unwarranted interruptions and preoccupation with trivial matters consistently sabotage your efforts, causing you to miss deadlines and disrupting the seamless flow of your tasks. These time vampires are not merely scavengers of your precious minutes. They are perpetrators of disarray, sapping your focus, productivity, and inner peace. Confronting these time vampires necessitates the establishment of clear boundaries and the unambiguous communication of your availability and limitations. A firm yet polite declaration of when you are accessible for calls or meetings as well as when you require undisturbed, concentrated work periods, serves as a constructive line of defense. Encourage them to honor your schedule and the value you place on your time. As you progressively seize control over the reins of your schedule and attention, you affirm your mastery over your time, setting boundaries that delineate the bounds of your availability and purposefully managing your hours. In the enduring words of the Stoic philosopher Seneca, it is not that we have a short space of time, but that we waste much of it. Hence, associating with individuals who uplift your spirit and resonate with Stoic principles is pivotal in your pursuit of Stoic philosophy and personal growth. By cultivating the ability to identify and sidestep these seven archetypal personas, the complainer, the drama magnet, the naysayer, the victim, the toxic positivist, the manipulator, and the time vampire, you strengthen your Stoic journey. This strategic navigation serves as your compass on the path to attaining tranquility while nurturing your personal growth. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the realm of human interactions and the wisdom of Stoic philosophy. As we navigate life's intricate tapestry, we encounter a diverse cast of characters, each with their unique traits and behaviors. By recognizing and understanding these seven types of individuals, the complainer, the drama magnet, the naysayer, the victim, the toxic positivist, the manipulator, and the time vampire. 
we empower ourselves to better navigate the challenges and complexities of our social landscape. Stoic philosophy offers us valuable insights and strategies for maintaining our inner peace, resilience, and personal growth, even in the face of challenging personalities. As we apply these timeless principles, we reclaim the pen to write our own life's script and establish boundaries that protect our time and well-being. If you found this content valuable, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the spread of Stoic philosophy. Your engagement fuels our journey and helps us further explore the profound wisdom of Stoicism. Thank you for being a part of this community, and remember, your journey toward personal growth and tranquility is in your hands. Keep embracing the wisdom of Stoicism and choose your companions wisely on this incredible voyage through life. Until next time, stay Stoic and stay strong.